Anzac Day tradition, but Two Up has been banned at one Sydney pub this year amongst claims it leads to antisocial behaviour. The Newmarket Hotel in Mascot says playing the game has the potential to cause problems. So is this an overreaction? Let's ask our Wednesday jury, commentator Rebecca Latorno and host of the ABC 702 breakfast show, Adam Spencer. Good morning, Beck and Adam. Hi, Hi guys. guys. Um, Beck, is this band fair enough? Well, I think possibly first we should explain to Paul what two up is, because you probably don't know. It's this incredibly dangerous game where coins are flung into the air, they can come down anywhere, people bet on them, if they don't win they punch each other out. So it's a really, really dangerous game. But it is an Anzac Day tradition, but seriously, it's a simple game where you, you do bet on coins flung in the air. And to ban it is the most un-Australian thing I've heard of. Antisocial behaviour, for God's sake, if two up causes antisocial behaviour, surely we should consider the fact that it might be the alcohol causing the antisocial behaviour. I mean, I'll just throw that out there. And if we're going to ban two up, we should probably ban beer drinking yobbos, we should ban football players. I don't know what else we should ban. It's a ridiculous thing and it's a tradition that should be there. I think more important, if we should consider the fact that we don't have a public holiday for this Anzac Day. This is something which has made me really upset, especially in a recession when everyone needs a bit of a boost, something to look forward to. And there are people who are, and I say this to the hotel that's banned it, there are people depending depending on that two-up game to pay their mortgage this Anzac Day, so reconsider. Okay. What do you think, Adam? Uh, first of all, I feel sorry for you, Paul. You've walked into the middle of an un-Australian gambling <laughs> Anzac Day frenzy there going, what the hell are these guys talking about? <laughs> Look, it is interesting, isn't it? This pub have clearly thought, we've got a problem here. Every year, people turn up at our pub, get really drunk from early in the morning and by late in the afternoon when they're playing a harmless coin game, <laughs> you start punching each other. We've got two options here. We could enforce the law with regards to not serving people who are drunk, or we could make sure they don't end up in a random game of two-up. It is <laughs> ludicrous. It's, it is unfortunate that some people try to celebrate this most sacred and special day on our national calendar yeah. by getting absolutely shattered. Some people do, and perhaps mm. you just watch out for those people. It's not the two-up that causes trouble. It's really, really drunk people gambling that Mo causes trouble. Mm. Moving on, the next time you get a bit hungry while you're driving, think twice before having a snack. Under new rules in the UK, drivers caught eating at the wheel could get charged 40% more for their car insurance. Um, Adam, fair or not? Good to see, Paul, that the UK is making a sensible stand on this, because as a cyclist, I see people doing ludicrous things in cars all the time. I think when you get pulled over for an RBT, that's a random breath test when you said you've been drinking. You should also have to open your mouth, look under your tongue, quick <laughs> floss check to see if you've consumed any food in the last 15 minutes. I once, in all seriousness, was cycling along, saw a guy driving while eating his dinner with a knife and <laughs> fork. No, no, no. That doesn't surprise me, actually, because I have a girlfriend who keeps salt and pepper and a full set of cutlery and popper juices in her in her glove box and has been known to eat the leftovers out of a takeaway container while driving. And just throw a little meal. dinner party for people yeah, she happens to have in the car. <laughs> some olive oil and... Thing. But, I mean, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Especially when you're in a busy schedule. I mean, I know that I have been known to drink coffee, spill it in my lap, eat a McMuffin, while slapping the kids down in the back to try Real and Real mates don't and... let mates eat and drive, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> OK, and moving on, um, there's a, another a thing, this is also in the UK, that there's a, a lady has been ordered to cover up naked garden gnomes after a complaint from a neighbour. The nude gnomes, I love the way that sounds, are uh, now for an extra layer after a call from a council officer. Beck, um, you know, what's this all about? And, you know, should kitties be scared of naked gnomes? Of gnomes' naughty bits? Mm. <laughs> Nudie gnomes. I often wonder what they kept down those baggy red pants of theirs. <laughs> why they were so baggy. I mean, I guess unless she's sort of hanging the washing on those sticky outy bits, it doesn't really worry me too much. I mean, for this poor woman, the funny thing about gnomes that she probably has to understand is that they're not real, and nor are they naughty bits. So it really <laughs> isn't a major problem. What's going to happen next? We're going to weld nappies onto baby borns, or you know, everyone's going to have to look like like Barbie with no private bits at all. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Is there anything wrong with a nude garden then? No, Paul, I'd have to say again, it's good to see the UK taking a sensible stand on this <laughs> tsunami of smut that is coming out. I've got a four-year-old daughter, Paul, and I can't walk past a garden bed these days without some pervy little ceramic big ears, as they call them, <laughs> peering out from amongst the weeds with a taste. At least your ones wear pants. The ones yeah, I see have got true. absolutely nothing on except some giant garden slug. It's offensive. Maybe, Stop it. Maybe just a, a fig leaf appropriately placed, or... Okay, uh, some uh, some... Good tips there, guys.